thank you folks. You know, there were a lot of movies that were made without me. It's one of the crimes of Hollywood that they're going to have to live with someday. But through a series of reenactments, I'm going to claim my place at the top of the Hollywood Actors A-list, where I belong. This is one of those classic scenes that I always knew I'd be great in, which they never gave me a part, where somebody has to confront that they love. I play a doctor. I just need a minute to get into my character. Where have you been? I was out. Were you using? No, 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 no. The dinner is cold. I've been yes. waiting for you for 16 hours. <laughs> yeah, 16 hours, so what? Do you know what this meal was? Roast loin of pork that cost $30 a pound. Well, what does that have to do with anything? Yes! I left in the middle of heart surgery for a millionaire to come back here and meet you for dinner. God only knows what kind of condition that man is in. Okay. What? what? What are you talking about? What are these pills? What? You're an addict! Give me those. A drug addict! <laughs> I'm conflicted because I love you, but... Okay, well, hold on. Well, just a minute, Colin, all right? Enough with the kitchen sink reality. This is not working. Um, all right. Let me ask you something. What, what are you trying to do with this scene? I'm trying to show you a doctor who's a husband who loves his wife, and she's falling apart from drugs. He's conflicted. Right, yeah. Okay. I know. I, I gathered that from the very specific dialogue. Who, uh, who wrote this? I did. <laughs> Great. Fantastic. Children of a lesser god. It's yeah. based sort of on my life, but, no, you know. Uh, well, uh, um. but uh, it's a little... I don't want to be critical. It's a little on the nose. I mean, everything happens in the first three lines. Okay? I mean, the movie would already be finished. And another thing, it's not sophisticated. Okay? It's not smart. Not smart? Mm. I made myself a doctor. You don't get much smarter than that. All right. Let's, okay, then let's talk about the script. Let's break it down. First of all, the 16-hour thing, I just don't buy it. I don't believe that a doctor would leave his patient uh, on a table for 16 hours. Not professional. I've seen it happen. What? Where? Different doctor friends I know and people have told me. Okay, and then what's the deal with a roast loin of pork, $30 a pound? When was the last time you were in a supermarket? I mean, except to buy like beer and cigarettes and stuff. <laughs> Nothing costs $30 a pound. Yeah, but they say raise the stakes so nobody cares about something for two ninety nine a pound. $30 a pound, then it's drama. <laughs> I, just, I just don't buy it. I, I don't believe the dialogue. It's completely untruthful. But that, because you're an actor. Yeah. I'm a writer and an actor. <laughs> you know what? I understand you're a little insecure. You're working with me. A lot of people feel that way. Don't worry about it, honey. All right. It's natural. You're are scared. You are you talking to me? I'll, I'll act you anytime. Are you talking to me, De Niro? Okay? Yeah. Look. You're lost. All right. You know what? Shit. Colin? Look, I'm sorry that Janine Garofalo canceled on you, okay? All right? And the only reason I agreed to do this little, this little sketch, this little kitchen sink reality, is because we live in the same building, and I didn't want there to be any of those uncomfortable elevator moments, all right? And by the way, good luck with uh, Night at the Roxbury, too. What is... Yeah. That's the kind of real moments we could have had in the scene. If you yeah. Like that since I work with Buddy Hackett and Carrot Top. You know what? No, me, Tom. I was only kidding, Eliana. Come back. You've been axed. You've been axed on my new show. You've been punked. We can uh, fix that, Dan, right? Edit out the uncomfortable part, get it like a scene, a usable scene. Come on. Let me just say one thing about Carrot Top being a tranny. First of all, if he is one, that's God bless him. Second of all, everybody thinks they're so hip making fun of Carrot Top, right? Nothing wrong with Carrot Top. Scott, I call him. I know him personally. And he would make a good tranny, not that he is one or not. But 
if he decided to be one, he'd probably be pretty good. He's got a kind of hairless body, skinny, I don't know. <laughs> Anybody? Okay. I feel like a freckled ass, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you've, just, you've just been accused of cheating, okay? What's your go-to story? Nick. Okay, first of all, you didn't say if I was rightly or wrongly accused. If I'm wrongly accused, I'm going to say, number one, where's your proof? Number two, where do you get the nerve to accuse me of something like that? Number three, I want an apology immediately. On the other hand, if I'm rightfully accused, I'm going to say, number one, where'd you get your proof? <laughs> number two, where'd you get the nerve to accuse me of such a thing? And number three, I want an apology. <laughs> Paul Mooney. Damn it. <laughs> no, on a serious tip, I don't believe in cheating. Uh, if you're with who you're with, you're with, you know, you're with who you're with. The only, no, that's true. The only time I was accused of cheating is when I was in school, junior high school, an original story I wrote in junior high school. And I had to bring my mother to school to prove that I wrote it. My teacher didn't believe it because it was so good. That's true. You and I'm just, I want to just give the kids some advice today because I was, I'm back in the day. Teachers have changed. Uh, so the teachers don't care about whether you get a, a, a good grade or a bad grade. Uh, so if your kid is up at 6 in the morning drinking coffee and whistling, he's having sex with his teacher. <laughs> Jim Norton! Um, well, I've actually been caught uh, in the act of cheating twice. The first time my girlfriend walked in while I was receiving a Hummer, and I, uh, I said, uh, uh, she's sleepwalking, don't wake her or she might bite down. <laughs> And uh, the second time she walked in and I tried the, uh, the whole, uh, ah, this is not what it seems approach. And I'm like, oh, honey, I dropped my contact lens into this girl's hiney and I was looking for it with my nose. <laughs> oh. All right, Keith. <sighs> Baby, put the knife down. <laughs> it's not what you think. I'm with the Make-A-Wish Foundation and this dying girl's last request <laughs> was to service me. Please tell me you're not this selfish. <laughs> All right. All right. And mine. I'd like to make mine, uh, hey, honey, who are you going to believe me? Who are you going to believe, honey? Me or Red Henry Prop Act? Come on. No? Come on, folks. I'm trying to keep it done. Uh... You know what, folks? That pisses me off. All right. Try to keep the what? I'm funny. <laughs> I know I didn't kill either, I know. Yeah, Sorry. exactly. All right. <laughs> you like you just wiped up the floor with this crap. Like you just said Dennis Miller's our special. Shut up. That's the first thing you I'll try it again, folks, because I think you missed the point. It's not like I wrote that down. I was trying to bring back the carrot top rip. So I'm going to say it again. Hey, folks, let me ask you something. You know what? I'm not going to say it again. I'm going to sit there with my... I'm going to sit there and check... Guess what, TV audience? Sometimes we bomb. Can you deal with it? Oh. <laughs> Good night.